Welcome to the Game of Risk, everyone. I'm your host, Olive XC, a top player at this game. And today, we are doing Tutor Tuesday, where I review a viewer game and help them, and you the viewer, get better at the Game of Risk. Today's game comes from Vampire Chicken, a master to grandmaster ranked Risk player playing on the classic map against five random players. This guy is actually the second account of Jonathan Schrantz, and you can see on the screen right here, is a YouTuber focusing on chess content with 50,000 subscribers. This is officially the biggest channel we've ever reviewed on Tutor Tuesday. So I'm really excited to be doing this for you all right here. I notice immediately you have your six right here on Australia. However, I feel like that going for this is going to be a trap. And this is because you can see black is placing a lot of troops in Australia. They have a lot of contingent forces up here in Asia. And it is, I think it's just gonna be a big mistake going for it. And uh, just so you all can see like uh, right here, uh, here's uh, Jonathan. He uh, does has his uh, camera up, has a very high quality mic. Again, check out his like uh, video and channel. It has some amazing stuff right here. But as we look at your turn right here, uh, you're not falling for the trap of going for Australia. I think this is the right decision to be making. It looks like that you are going to be going for the Yora play right here, which I think makes a, a lot of sense. This is because the purple player is instead going for North America and is removing their troops from the Europe region. If they were going for Europe, you would have been in a tough spot. We'll also notice hilariously, the green player is also leaving their troops in Australia, which is going to be leaving conflict. Only one player can win and everyone else will lose. No Australia, no win. And that's why you have to be very careful round one, round two against random players to potentially be going for the continent. Because if they're going to be very aggressive attacking, you don't know what's going to happen. Now the pink player on their move, as we can see right here, is being very, very aggressive going for the South America continent. And I think this is a little bit of a mistake because it's a bit of an overextension. They clearly had a lot of troops going for them. However, they won, didn't know how other players were going to be reacting to them. Two, uh, their, their borders now are weak. Like they only have like an eight right here, nothing guarding right here. Uh, in this case, you can see right here, purple feels very, very threatened because if they are going for North America, and it's gonna take them multiple turns, and they have a very strong South America, well, South America can only go one way, right? Towards them. So I completely see why they're attacking them right here. This is why it's normally not a good idea to be taking your continent right away. If your other opponents are not getting their continents, you have time to really kind of build up your troops, group them together, make alliances, do some diplomacy in the early game. Just taking a content right away and aggressively pointing it towards someone just creates conflict and, and leaves your borders exposed to be attacked by other players. Now we can see the, the black player right here. Uh, even though the green player was clearly showing that they wanted to be going for Australia, uh, they're not giving up, so this is just classic. Only one player is going to be winning right here. Red is actually being pretty smart. They realize they can't win, so they're just trying to get any value they can out of their two and immediately getting out. My guess is, out of this war between black and green is that black is going to win because whenever you're earlier in the turn order, you're more likely than the other players to be getting a set which will allow you to be establishing an advantage. I also see that our protagonist, Vampire Chicken, made a very nice move doing a 2v1 right here. It's very clear that the red player is going to be going for the Africa continent. You're gonna be losing this too regardless. By uh, trying to do a 2v1 right here, you're establishing some diplomacy with the red player and you're getting some value out of troops you didn't really care much about either. Now, the pink player who again was just some um, overextending like uh, way too much before. Like, like we can see they're the weakest player on this board right now with only 18 troops because they were attacked so much. They have a very strong player on their side with uh, red who can just be uh, eliminating them at uh, any given time. So, so we can see like at this time that purple is in direct conflict with a uh, pink. Green is in direct conflict with the black player. Red has been doing pretty good but they're pretty low on troops and you're just sitting off in the corner the only thing I'm a little bit worried about like on your end is the fact that you keep leaving your like uh, your troops right here in Australia. 
The reason why I feel that like this is a mistake, well, not necessarily a mistake, but just like a risk, is that if if what if like green or black just really wants to group their troops in, like you never know if they're actually going to hit it or not. So it's just like like a liability and something that you have to be like very careful about. In this case, you're like, if, if someone gives me a one, I'll hit it. Otherwise, I'll keep it there. And but it's, it's obvious like you're not going to want to go for Australia. Even if both players suicide and you're able to take it, if any of the other players have any remaining troops left, they're just going to be hitting you. It looks like they're they're both single-mindedly focused, but I, I've seen games before where someone just did like a 7v6, so they wanted to group anything they could into Australia, and they didn't care about the consequences. Again, we're just seeing the huge huge problem of overextending early game look at the pink player because of their overextension they now uh cannot take south america they are extremely weak with 16 troops they cannot retaliate against a red player and everyone is attacking everyone except you uh the vampire chicken our protagonist is making an, a really nice play for europe but they recognize that they don't have the strength to hold it right now by taking one card per turn and just grouping all of their armies together in one spot, it's allowing them to stay strong. It allows them to stay out of other players' ways. It gives them opportunities to eventually get the content or eliminate a player if it's worth it for their cards. The purple player and, and, and pink are, are, are still staying in conflict right here. We have no idea if they're going to be attacking each other like anytime soon. And a little bit of annoying thing now happens with you right here. The green player gave you an open avenue to attack, but the pink player immediately left their troops in because they, I think they're trying to have your 6 be trapped, but I think given the level of play from the pink player, being taking North South America too fast the first turn, I just don't think they understand diplomacy and what they're doing. We're also seeing some weak moves by the purple player splitting their troops. You want to leave your troops like in one army when you can. By just grouping things and leaving things on your border, you just leave yourself very, very weak and, and set up for, like, for turtle play. While can work is very, very passive and just kind of leads to other players making aggressive plays on the board. But now we're getting to the third turn right here. And if black player has a set, they should absolutely be turning it in because if they have an opportunity to be eliminating, or sorry, the uh, green player, they absolutely should be doing it. Because if the, pink, if the green player has a set, it's only going to go one way to this <laughs> black player right here, and that's going to be very, very bad. Now, a very interesting play happens right here I want to bring up for the audience, and that is that the red player is trying to be killing the pink player. But we can see that the roll here failed. This is actually a really bad move by the red player, and I want to explain why. I'll just pause this for a moment because this is a critical moment of the game. And you put this down as like a good play. This is actually a bad play. Uh, this is because at first, if you look at the pink player's troops, they had around 16 troops. Each card is worth about two troops. So the value of pink right now is worth somewhere between um, six to eight troops, like at most. If the red player eliminates the pink player, they're probably going to be losing around like 12 to 15 troops. That would put their total stack at around like a 15 troops. When they then eliminate the pink player, they'll be getting three cards plus one card at the end of their turn. They won't be able to trade in in turn and they will be stuck at four cards and 15 troops. On the next orbit, uh, other players could trade in like purple and black, in this case, probably purple, and have a chance of maybe even like a eliminate the red player. And if you eliminate a player and trade it in turn, you're potentially getting 20 cards in one orbit, which can make up for losing 15 to 20 troops attacking someone else and maintaining the balance of the game and keeping you within the game. The key thing to take from this right here, red attacking pink is a huge mistake. By doing so, all they end up doing is making it more likely to get eliminated. So that's an important thing like to keep in mind like right here. Right now you're just saving your troops waiting for like the right moment, but while it was flashy and I'm the guy who loves doing flashy kills for my subscribers in my uh, classic fix schemes, a uh, big big mistake right here. What you're doing now just like saving your troops, grouping everything like uh, in Europe again, you're moving out of the way cuz you're clearing out pink and hoping that then either red or someone else could be eliminating like a, a pink player. Because again, they have no idea someone else is going to be hitting them. You just wanted to protect your troops and 
you're you're primed to take Europe the following turn. You make no enemies. You're really just kind of dominating this board right now with some very very solid play. Pink also has no trade in on five right here, so they are in atrocious, atrocious, atrocious like a state right now. If red had instead had just waited one turn and waited until like uh, they were at four cards and pink was at four cards, it could have then have been worth it like to trade in and try to eliminate them. Because you have no idea if like black or green would have attacked the pink position or you would attack the pink position. You could potentially have less troops and you could have had the chance like uh, to eliminate them. As we get to the fifth card, like a uh, trade in right here, we see uh, and notice that, that purple is only at 20 troops right now. They are getting very weak. And now the question comes up, should you, the protagonist, be eliminating the purple player? In this case, well, you can be getting a potential uh, trade-in for yourself because it will be getting a total of like nine cards. It's really on the fence to be able to do that. I find that if a player is being very aggressive and they're very, very good at the game, it could be worth it. There's actually, I think, a better move for you here. That's going to be eliminating the black player. The black player is on five cards as well, and but they have five less troops. So it could actually be very, very safe uh, to eliminate them uh, at this time. So let's see. Do you go for it? And you do go for the play. It's a very, very safe kill. You lose not not a crazy number of troops, like like a six, seven troops right here. You're getting five cards, getting a full trade in. It was absolutely the right decision for you. You're gaining troops on the move, maintaining balance, and can now get the European continent. There is something to be considering though, right now, as you're sitting at like a 24 troops. Because right now you're just going for the Europe continent. I would act actually ask you to consider, is it worth it to be taking out the pink player? The pink player right here, you can see that there's like a four sitting up now in North America at this time. Then you have to attack two ones and then get to pink. So their total value is around 17, 18 troops. You would then be able to trade in again, be on five cards the next turn and again, be in a very, very strong spot for yourself. You end up not doing this though and just taking over like a Europe. So I don't hate the play. And I think the biggest reason why I, I think this is all right in the end is that your style of play is that you're very big on like the alliances and just not pissing off other players. It's clear everyone else is just attacking each other right now and not understanding the diplomacy. You get the diplomacy very well in working with the other players. So from a troop standpoint, I think it could have been very worth it and flashy. I think your subs would have loved it seeing like the kill. A strategic standpoint, long term, uh, you are making the right move here. On Purple's turn, they're now trading in. I think they make a very good move. They don't take over North America. Uh, this is because a very common pitfall of a lot of South American players is if they lose their contingency in the Asia region or the Europe region or wherever it is, and they're just staying in South America, there's only one way they can go, right? They can go into North America or they can go into Africa or they can stay card block and stay in Peru, which is kind of a boring game. The purple player is recognizing this and being a little bit more cautious. So this time we can see like right away, I think it's like the, really like the second best game outside of you that they've attacked pink a little bit, but they've secured their continent. And now you, in your case, are just keeping your troops more active right here. I also like what you're doing. You're leaving like a nice like two front in Europe. This I think like kind of like the best way to be using the continent. If people were to attack you, you immediately have an army to hit them back. Your also, army is also available to attack because given your players are making so many mistakes, but there, it's clear that you're not attacking them. I think it's actually like okay to be doing this like right here. So again, I think a really, really solid play. Now in Pink's case right here, they are just leaving their troops very, very antagonistically towards the red player. If I was a pink player right here, what I would be doing is instead of leaving my troops in Brazil, I would be leaving them in Peru. Or if I want to be a little more aggressive, putting them immediately in the uh, C Central America region to try to move towards North America and keep getting cards for myself. If you try to pick a front on like two sides, you're just going to lose right here. And in this case, the purple player can just card block you very, very easily. I would have just tried to make an alliance with I can with the red player, let them know I'm not attacking them and then move towards purple 
where you're stronger than them and can try to make a move uh, on them if possible. But because of the passive play and you just saw the immediate 20 troops at you right here, the purple player missed like the next big threat, which is they're now completely, completely card blocked and uh, they just hit the pitfalls of South America. This all came down to them aggressively taking it the first turn and not protecting their troops and slowly taking the continent. This, a, a series of early game mistakes cascaded to this current issue that the pink player is now facing. But our protagonist, Vampire Chicken, is just chilling right now. He's just taking one card per turn, holding a huge continent, having the most troops on the board. If you wanted to be like super flashy, you probably could eliminate a green very, very easily and maintain the balance of the game. But again, like you don't need to be flashy. Like you have a little bit of a different style than me, but I, I like your style. Because green's like now, now able like, like to trade in if they wanted to. And, and look at what they're doing. They're doing the classic Australian strategy of taking one card per turn and passing and leaving their army very, very, or sorry, they're very army very trapped for themselves in Australia. Like, no, it's like China's taken, uh, India's taken, and now if so all the other players were eliminated, it'd be very easy to outproduce like the green player and then take them out right here. It's a classic Australian trap. And <laughs> speaking of traps right here, we can see that the pink player fell for an even bigger one where. <laughs> They're like, I can't get cards, so I'm just going to suicide onto somebody. Uh, very, very poor play from Pink. I just would have, at this point, just Captain Peru and just hopefully had no one attacked me. But now with only four cards at this time, what, what the purple player is doing is very, very correct, uh, eliminating them. However, it is a very, very big mistake to be leaving their troops next to red right here. Uh, this is because the red player can be very, very pissed after getting suicided on. And you're also leaving your troops very antagonistically to be attacking them. As I would have probably moved my 17 towards Central America, made an alliance with red, and told them to attack my territory. And I would be giving red South America. And then from a theoretical standpoint, we can be in a situation now where the red player holds South America and Africa, getting five troops per turn, purple player comes to North America, you own Europe, and you guys own the, these specific borders right here, and then you slowly go in and eliminate green. Instead, there's just a suicide. <laughs> Red just gives up on the game. You clearly have more troops than all players combined right here, so you can immediately end the game in any way that you want. So you take out Red right here, get their card, uh, you, you still have more troops than all players combined, and purple's on five cards. You should be eliminating them here. You recognize that and you are taking them out. Like, like seriously, almost a perfectly like flawless game from you at this time. The only thing that I saw like, like within your gameplay that I think like was like, like a bit off is this moment right here. Uh, a very common thing with the Australian player when they're trapped like this is you can do the four continent endgame strategy where you have troops on the Ukraine, Middle East, and Kamjekka. And then the, the green player is unable to trade in or they only get five troops and then you get all four of these continents right here and then immediately eliminate green the following turn. So instead of leaving everything right there, because you already have more than enough troops, uh, I would have probably left like, like three or four troops on each of these locations and then grouped your remaining army here. You would have gotten so many additional troops the next turn, but instead, green is gonna be able to break the majority of your bonuses right here. Thankfully, you have so many more troops than the green player and all, all these extra cards as well, so it's not going to be mattering uh, at all. And still 15, like you're still completely breaking the balance of the game in your favor. This was like a little bit closer and in games where like you actually have a little bit less troops than the other Australian player that's trapped, knowing the four continent end game strategy is a really critical skill you're gonna to need to really make up those extra troops and get the victory. But in this case, your opponents were just pretty weak right here. You are going to clean up and vampire chicken. Thank you so much for this wonderful game. If you're enjoying this content, please consider subscribing and check out uh, Jonathan uh, Schrantz and uh, Vampire Chicken on uh, YouTube. But with that, this is Olive XC signing off.